Hey folks, it's uh, 10.30 here in Colorado, and um, 10.30 p.m., and I decided to do a live one because there's some things that uh, really trouble me right now, just suddenly hit me. I've been talking about um, the effect of this coronavirus, and uh, one of the things I've been saying is that it's, you know, very much um, an overblown crisis. Um, I just watched a video put out a couple of days ago by Sid Roth, and it reminded me of some things, some things that I had to really just, I just hadn't connected the dots. And uh, what I came to was this. Uh, you know, Sid was, Sid was talking about the, the effect of this and the potential effect of this. <clears throat> and then he was saying that the real, the real danger, the real thing going on, is that this fear is demonically inspired um, in order to just cause damage in, in the whole world. It's this, this is a pandemic. It's affecting the whole world. But the fear and the effect of it is way out of proportion to what is really real. The um, stock market has crashed. Our economy could completely unravel. It could be the, the pin that gets pulled. And here's, here's what I was reminded of. Because it was Sid, I was reminded that I appeared on his show in 2018. And on the show, I shared a vision that I had received back in um, December of 2016, right after the election. I was praying with our, with our prayer team on a Monday night, and I saw a picture of four sticks standing up with the fourth stick bending. And I said at the time, Lord, what does this mean? What, what, what am I seeing, this, these four sticks with the fourth stick bending? And the Lord said two things to me. The first thing that he said was, you have four years in which to prepare, and then a bending. Then some kind of a downturn I didn't understand, or some kind of trouble I didn't understand what it was at the time. And the second thing that he said to me was, you, plural, you, the church, have lost the art of the tremble. Which means that we, we just lost the fear of God. We don't tremble before him. We don't respect him. We, um, we need to learn the fear of the Lord again. I mean, go beyond the warm fuzzies and learn the fear of the Lord again. I didn't really know what to expect when the impeachment proceedings began, I thought, oh, that's it. That must be the downturn. But now we have the coronavirus and the fear that it's creating. You get one case in a city and everything shuts down. People are in a panic. The stock market has crashed. Airlines are being shut down. Countries are being closed. The Lord told me we have four years in which to prepare, four years for the church to wake up. I'm not sure that we did. But what I know now is that it is time for us to wake up. This is our hour. This is the time when we need to be on our knees in prayer, praying against the fear, praying that uh, people would return to a tremble, a, a position of trembling before God, to really fearing Him once more, respecting Him once more. Really, the battle that's going on right now for the soul of this nation the battle that's going on in this election contest isn't really about politics. It's about what kind of a nation we're going to be. It's about morality. It's about righteousness. It's about whether we're going to murder children in the womb. It's about, it's about whether we're going to remain a nation of people who, who maintain our national character, uh, the, our, the, where we, we value self-reliance, we value hard work, or whether we're going to become socialist, where we're all taken care of. I could go on and on with this, but the real battle has to do with morality. Are we going to walk by biblical morals? Are we going to murder children in the womb? Are we going to stand for these things? And I think the access point for this demonic fear, really, I mean, the enemy is an opportunist. He looks for ways to get in. And I really believe that the access point, the reason this fear can so take hold and so twist so many people is that we've opened the door through unrighteousness. We've opened the door through the loss of the fear of God. And I mean fear of God. The Greek word is phobos. And it, and it doesn't mean simple respect. It means I tremble before the Lord. Yes, he's my father. Yes, he loves me. 
Yes, I'm safe with him. Yes, he's gentle, but he's also a king, and he is also a righteous judge. And what is happening right now is a wake-up call. This is the fourth year that I foresaw in which there is a bending, and it's a big bending. We have political turmoil. We have an attempt to impeach a president who stands for the church and who stands for Israel, who, who, who transferred our embassy to Jerusalem. Do not underestimate the significance of that. We have a president who actually prays. I don't like his mouth. I don't like what he says. People accuse me of criticizing him for that. But I recognize what he has done, and I recognize where he stands. And so many things in the midst of this are under threat. This battle is for the soul of a nation, and it's for the soul of a world. And this is the time for believers to rise. This is the time for us to pray. This is the time for us to walk in the Holy Spirit. This is the time for revival to break out. It is not a time to join the world in this demonically inspired fear that goes way beyond the effect, the actual effect, the actual um, danger of the, of the coronavirus itself. This is way out of proportion, and it is demonically fueled. Do not participate in it. Be wise. I'm not saying go out and expose yourself you know, willy-nilly to the virus. I'm not saying that, that, that uh, the aged and people with underlying health problems are not in danger. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying that there's a wake-up call for the church right now. And I'm saying that we need to be praying. We need to be taking up authority over this. We need to be bearing witness. We need to be repenting. <laughs> I have a chapter coming up in, in my new book that's coming out in August that says, What Must We Do? And it's all about repenting as we, we have partaken in pornography. We have, have participated in the sin of our nation, that we as a nation are guilty, whether we're personally guilty or not. It's the kind of prayer that Nehemiah prayed when he needed favor from the king to return to the, to, to the land and, and, and begin the rebuilding. And he said, I and my fathers have sinned. We need a corporate repentance. Believers, Christians, repenting on behalf of the nation, identifying ourselves with the nation these days. We need to do this in the body of Christ. If we can do this, if we can do this, we stand a chance of turning again, of turning this nation. We stand a chance of ending the current insanity and, and having another four years, another four years of an expanding economy and a favor on the church. I'm calling us to prayer, and I mean intensely prayer right now. Stop picking at each other. I get that all the time. I see this happening all the time. Christians picking at each other over doctrines. Knock it off. Knock it off. Stop it. Stop it. We need to come into repentance about this. We need to get ourselves focused on the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to repent for the sins of our nation. And we need to get about the business of winning some souls and demonstrating who Jesus really is. Four years in which to prepare. Three years have passed. Actually, a little more than three years have passed since I gave that word. We are now in the year of downturn and of crisis. And it needs to be turned, and it can only be turned through prayer. And I believe it has to be that identificational repentance like Nehemiah prayed. We have sinned. We have turned aside. We have entered into iniquity. We have lost the art of the tremble, as the Lord told me in 2016. And with that, I'll leave it. My spirit is burning with this right now. I'll leave it. I want to say good night. But I'm, I'm, please, please, please pray. We are at a turning point right now. This is a real crisis. But it's not a crisis of disease. It's a crisis of demonically fed fear. Amen. Good night. Have a good night's rest. Unless you're seeing this tomorrow. God bless you all. God bless you all.